Hi everyone, this is Arcadius and welcome back to Naval Creed. Today uh, we're going to be taking a quick break from Stats Clash. Uh, usually I go over the update and then we go over the Stats Clash material for that day in my weekly videos. However, there is such a big update this week that I've decided to actually separate it. And we're actually going to have some uh, daily videos going over some new ships as well. Uh, that's not to say that we will not be doing the Stats Clash. We will be doing that. However, it will be its own separate video later on this week. Uh, probably in a couple of days, I would say. So, why am I separating it? It's because this update is honestly one of the largest ones they've ever done. There's a new events. There's like five new ships. There's some new camos. And it, it's just a lot of good stuff. So, let's start with, I guess you could say the camos. So first off, we have a new camo for Super Yamato. Now, my personal opinion, it looks like trash. Uh, it's based on a like a wasteland, like an apocalypse kind of camo. Um, and this is what it looks like. Yep, it's orange, it's gross, but there is a perk behind this. Uh, there's also a moving camo. That's something that I think they're trying to try here. Uh, I don't think we have a camo that has moving parts on it yet in the game besides this one um so going back to the french battleship line we had a couple of camos come out for all of this we had the pink one and then we have the blue one which turned a normal tech tree ship into a prism ship uh, well it's a prism camo but it still has the same effects as a prism ship that is uh well a higher free xp rate and all these other you have the event gain bonus the gold xp all that so it's pretty much turned a normal tech tree ship into a prism ship without actually having to buy the ship itself you just bought the camo and it's actually a lot cheaper just to buy the camo and the same thing goes for the super yamato camo this is a prism ship camo on a tech tree ship so it just turned the ship with the largest guns in the game into a free xp grinding ship which is amazing because I actually really, really like this ship and it's kind of overpowered, but not so much overpowered that it's impossible to be sunk in it. As she's still just a normal Yamato, you just have overpowered guns. Uh, like I said, I'm not really a fan of the camo. However, I am a fan of the prism bonus of the free XP gain and all that jazz. Um, so I will be using her as a free XP grinding ship in the future. And for 1,500 prisms, she's actually the cheapest camo ship you can get. Well, let me put it in perspective for you. You can either get a... Let me go back to the actual ships itself. So let me think of a really high tier. So let's go with Soyuz. Savitsky Soyuz costs 3,030 gems to purchase. And same with Temeraire. And those are 9.6 um matchmaking ships so like let's say timber right here 3030 prisms and you only get a 9.6 ship now temporary is not a bad ship by any means she's a really good ship but that's pretty expensive for a ship that's about what 60 dollars i would say um actually minimum is, is 50 honestly but you can get the um the camo for this ship for only was it 1500 prisms so it's literally half price for a ship that's a top tier battleship so matchmaking 10 and it's honestly a really powerful ship too so we're gonna have our own video going over all prism ships and diamond ships and free xp ships and all those other ships later on after we do the stats clash and we'll go over each one individually to see if it's worth a purchase or not but i can tell you right now if you're looking for an easy ship to grind free xp on definitely take a look at the camos for alzis and super yamato if you have the ships then i would recommend it because it's actually really really cheap considering the bonuses and the effect that you get from all of these camos so this is the first camo that came out and the second one is actually based on an event that we'll be doing the first mission on today however i already have the camo and so it's actually for the American Tier 9 Battleship Iowa. Now, Iowa already had 
a sister ship, and that is what I had renamed Wisconsin. However, it didn't really look like the modernized Iowa at the end of the war, and I was kind of upset by that. Uh, what I mean by that is that it didn't have the updated bridge structure such as um, Missouri and Illinois and Iowa and Montana have. However, this new camo actually does have the updated bridge structure, and I will probably play Iowa a little bit more than I normally do um, because I like of it. Now, I have renamed this newest uh, skin for Iowa, New Jersey, and that is because I already have Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Illinois. And so adding New Jersey almost completes the entire list of Iowa-class battleships. There was actually six of them ordered. Four of them were built. Two of them were canceled. One of those is Illinois. And the last one is Kentucky. Uh, so if for some reason we ever get another Iowa-class battleship in the game or a camo, that one will be then in Kentucky. But... This is what Illinois looks like, and this is the final reward for the camo challenge for the current event. I have a nice little shark mouth here. Um, honestly, it, as you can see here, you have the updated bridge, and the camo is not that bad. It's pretty plain, but I have nothing to complain about it. Um, one thing that you can you will see in game is that when you actually press heal, you have a blue heal, and you have like little ha-has, like it's laughing at you. Uh, when you heal so that's a nice little effect but I honestly just like the fact that it has the modernized bridge a uh, couple more things in regards to camos uh, let me go back here you can purchase the super yama skin as we mentioned but you can also purchase I think it's under sister ships actually yep here it is you can purchase the skin for France which is an event camo uh, for diamonds. You can also purchase the other Super Yamato camo that was also an event bonus. So these are only limited time. Uh, if you have these ships and you feel like you want these camos, then make sure you do so because like I said, I believe it's only out for a week or two. Um, if you're going to buy a camo though for a super model figure out which one you want this one does not give you prism bonuses or prism ship bonuses the other one does but honestly i love this camo a lot more um i don't think there's anything other than that um discounts well there was some prism packs or not prism packs um iridescent packs that you can get and you have a higher chance of actually getting uh orion from those i bought all four of the iridescent packs and i was able to win two of these however considering i already have the ship i was getting six hundred thousand free xp instead so if you can afford it definitely look into those iridescent packs i only personally purchase them when they're on sale um but you do get a lot of good loot from those so if you have a couple on uh, dollars to spend or on the side maybe you want to look into that Definitely not a bad option. Uh, what else? There was one more thing. Uh, Lioning. So the super carrier at Matchmaking Tier 20 is actually out for purchase for a limited time. Here she is right here for 700 prisms. Now that's not a lot. If you actually go to prisms, that's about $11, which is not bad at all. Uh, so yeah, if you really wanted Lioning, if you've seen her before, here's your chance to purchase her. Like I said, she's come out for purchase uh, once or twice before, but it's never a guarantee that she'll ever come back out again. However, I say that and then she does come back out again. So um, yeah, she is a prism ship. Uh, you can grind for XP with her and she's a really fun and easy ship to play. Definitely would recommend getting her. Uh, they have star coins for the event, and we now have a star shop. And so we can purchase ships there as well. So you can purchase the Super Yamato skin, you can have Montana Galaxy Flame, Yama White Lotus, White Lotus Saratoga, the Holzendorf or Bismarck Space Camo, the Des Moines Space Camo, Asano or Shinano Aya Forest, Shimikaze Sakura and Malta Ice Knight. So all of these are purchased 
with star coins, which you can earn through purchasing the iridescent packs, I believe. And I don't know if it's actually through the event or not. I think it's just the iridescent and gold packs. But you can certainly save up to get those. Um, out of all these ships, I only don't have this one, in which I actually really want this one. So I might have to look into actually getting this one. We'll see. Um, but yeah, all of these ships are here. If you want my recommendations out of all these, if you're looking to grind for one, Yamato Wasteland, you can get that through other means. Uh, so I would actually not get it through Star Coins. Montana Galaxy Flame, if you don't get the iridescent packs, try and work your way to this one. That's definitely a good ship. White Lotus, I have had no problem with this ship. Saratoga is pretty much the same as Lexington. Uh, same as Bismarck, it's just a copy paste. Des Moines, just a copy paste. Shinano is a copy paste. Sakura is a copy paste. And all these are just copy paste of the same ships in the game. But you do get the prism ship bonuses from all of these. So if you like these in the normal tech tree, then maybe you want to take a look to see if you can get a prism ship version of that same ship. And you can do a little bit better with it and get a little bit more reward. Um, Let's see what else. There's a lot of stuff to go over, so I'm trying to remember it all. So there are new ships that came out. So we're, let's start with the tech tree ones. We now have the ability to play Shinomi. Uh, kind of changed the name of her. It was Shinonomi, but that's kind of a mouthful. So I just kind of shortened it a bit. And I can't say I'm disappointed in this ship. Um, I've had very, very good games. I don't think I've had a game yet that was less than 250,000 damage. And honestly, my first couple of games, I almost cracked 500,000. Uh, she has really, really good guns. However, she is a very, very big ship. Uh, one more thing about Super Yamada, though, before we go. I did rename this camo, uh, this ship, Rishiki. Uh, so if you see that in games, that's why it's, it's a new name. But yeah, so you have Super Yamato there, and you have normal Yamato is this size. Shinomi is the longest Japanese battleship we have in the game right now. Um, she might actually... Yeah, she's even longer than a Magi. So a very long ship, a very tall ship with a lot of freeboard. She's not necessarily strong in the armor department. Um, but she's not a bad ship. Now that we have this ship, we can finally go over the alternate branch off of Amagi, which includes Hiraga and Shinomi. So we'll be doing that in the near future. However, we do have a few other ships to do before that. And then we also have the final Russian battleship. So we've had Poltava for a while. We've had Lenin for a while. We've had Vladivostok for the last couple of weeks. And now we have Kremlin, and oh my, is she a fun ship. I've really been looking forward to this ship. I've seen it played on World Warships for so long, and it just looks amazingly powerful. And I can assure you, she is amazingly powerful. And she might be one of the strongest top-tier battleships in the game. Um, she's a very good sniper battleship, and she's very similar, I would say, to Super Yamato, except with better armor arrangement. Uh, like I said, now that we have all of these ships in the game, we can now go over Poltava, Lenin, Vladivostok, and Kremlin. Same with Hiraga and um, Shinonomi, or Shinomi. So we'll go over the remaining tech tree ships once uh, we have finished everything else. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention, there are a couple rank point um packs out available as well so those give you like Moskva and Cheyenne Charlemagne however they did it in a weird way they only gave you three of them and I needed five which they normally do so I'm two away from actually getting Moskva but once we actually get her we will do our own video on her since she will be the next rank point ship I will be purchasing so look forward to that um so that finalizes all of the tech tree ships that we'll be going over and that brings us to diamond ships so there's been a few more diamond ships that have come out let me just go over uh so this one is a pan asian well technically it's a chinese cruiser and it's actually one i predicted that would come out as a point pack if you actually go back to one of my videos 
of predictions for future Naval Creed, gem ships, all that jazz. Uh, this is Ning Hai, and she may not look like much, but she is actually one of the best cruisers at this tier, that tier being 3.5. She is tossed into tier 3 and 4 games, so you will come across carriers and stuff like that. She only has three twin 140mm guns, which is about 5.4 uh, guns. They're not accurate all that much, but they are pretty decent, and you can get a ton of citadels. I've had games where I've actually crossed like 150,000 damage. Uh, you have two twin torpedo launchers, which reach out to 7 kilometers, and your anti-aircraft suite is practically unmatched at this tier. You have the strongest AA in at this tier overall, I would say. Um, we can actually look at the details right here. Yeah, it may not seem like a lot, but it actually is. And I can assure you, if you go up against carriers, which you will at tier 4, you can actually knock down up to like 10 planes or more. And with a starting carrier that has a maximum of like 30 or so, sometimes even less, that is a pretty significant number. Um, so yeah, she's pretty good. Her main downfall is her speed as a cruiser of only 23 knots. You will struggle to even catch up to battleships, honestly. But your torpedoes are really good. We have really fast reload. Um, yeah, I don't really have any problem with the ship at all. I do believe she will be a limited time pack for purchase. So it's, again, one of those things that if you have the few extra dollars to spare, I would say get her, honestly. Uh, she's one of the better packs that have come out, um, not like Yachtsen. If Yachtsen ever comes out, don't get her. Uh, it's absolutely worthless. Same with Ding Wan. Uh, you do have a couple ships that are pretty decent, and Ning Hai is one of those. So uh, we will do our own video on her again, like I said. But for right now, my opinion is to purchase her if you have the few extra cents laying around. Um, all right, so that brings us to the... So this is the Baltimore Cruiser with three twin 12-inch guns. Um, yeah, this ship is actually really, really powerful, and I highly recommend it. Uh, you have Alaska guns, which can overmatch cruisers from the bow, and Citadel battleships if you get the right angle. And not only that, but she has radar. Now, I actually looked into the radar a bit, and I noticed something that I didn't notice before. There are two types of radar that are available to equip on cruisers. So the majority of them are the ones that, I'm going to use Roanoke as an example here, or Wichita. So for example, Wichita's radar has a scan range of 15 kilometers and a scan precision of 50 meters. So it can go far, but the accuracy is kind of questionable. And I have seen that in game. That's why I'm not a big radar user, because you can see that where the ship generally is, but that doesn't really give you any indication of where the ship really is so it gives you a general idea and you can't lock onto the target with your guns that way so it's you can you know where the ship is but you can't do anything about it however norfolk and actually the radars and on cleveland fargo and worcester are all the same and that they are only 11 point or 11 uh, kilometer range but your scan precision is 2.5 meters so it's pretty much where you see the ship is where it is, and I have seen that in game. So it's actually a pretty useful radar. If you know the speed of the ship, you can kind of predict where it is, or if it's stationary in a smoke screen, if you pop your radar, where your radar says that ship is, it's going to be, and you can kind of blind fire with a kind of decent accuracy, I guess you could say. Since your guns are not going to be locked on, um, it, you're, it's questionable. But yeah, you have pretty decent radar. And your guns are really good. You have the strongest or one of the strongest anti-aircraft suites in this at this tier. I went up against a Hiryu and I was able to shoot down like 42 out of 76 planes. Um, she just kept getting focused on. She does not have a defensive AA, however. So you do have to buff up your AA without that. And one thing that you can't tell from here, nor from the general stats is her secondaries. 
her secondary range is 5.0, but if I'm correct, she actually has the same secondaries as Illinois, or at least they feel a lot better than any other secondaries on American cruisers. I've had games where I've gotten almost 20,000 damage just from my secondaries, and that's actually pretty consistent. Uh, so not only do you have Alaska guns and Baltimore anti-aircraft, but also pinpoint accuracy radar, and you have Illinois secondaries. So there's a lot of good stuff in this ship. And like I said, we'll do our own video on her. Don't worry about it. But for right now, definitely think about purchasing her. Purchasing her. Also, when she launches fighters, she launches two of them at once in a double fighter, which is something I think only this American cruiser can do. I don't think there's any others that can do that, but I could be wrong about that. We'll figure it out. Uh, preemptive opinion before the video on her herself is a purchaser. Um, there is so many good things out of the ship. I've had so many fun games with her. Definitely think about it. And then the last but not least um, ship that new came out is Izuma or the tier nine Japanese cruiser. Now, honestly, I'm actually pretty disappointed in this ship so far. I have not been able to have too many games where I've actually enjoyed it. I might have done well, but I haven't really enjoyed it. Uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. So to start off with, she does actually equip a anti-aircraft barrage. And her AA is really decent. I've been able to take down quite a few aircraft with it. Um, but... I don't think she should be focused as a full AA ship. If you're looking for a super cruiser like that, then I would say Alaska or Guam would be better situated for that. But she's definitely not bad either. Her guns are 310 millimeter, so about 12 inch, 12.1 I think. High explosive is pretty decent. You can start a lot of fires. But her armor piercing is actually pretty disappointing. I can get like a full broadside on a battleship and it'll shatter honestly and i've only been able to citadel battleships at like three kilometers away which is not something you really want to be at in this ship secondaries um they're pinpoint accuracy but they're only like akazuki guns so there's nothing that they can really do against ships bigger than a destroyer um and no torpedoes on this cruiser so yeah, you have decent high explosive shells, but your accuracy is kind of questionable. Honestly, this is a more defensive play style than an offensive play style. So Alaska and Guam and even Charnhorst and Lean can be very offensive based because you have the ability to be that way. But the ship is similar to Kronstadt um, in the way that you're always going to be on the defensive and I don't know, it's not really the gameplay I wanted from her, but that's what we have, and I'm still playing her, so maybe I'll get the hang of how to play her before her own video. And with that, I'm pretty sure that completes everything that's new. There's been a couple changes, um, like, for example, Helena has had an increase in her anti-aircraft defense damages, and actually make her defensive AA kind of useful so helena is a specific example that you either use aa and you have unlimited aa barrage or you get a heal uh it's not both you have an unlimited well i don't know if it's unlimited actually no and you have some radar which you can only equip you can only equip radars so you're always gonna have radar on the ship or aa or a heal so I haven't actually had a chance to go up against a carrier with the increased AA. I've only played one game so far with the new AA stats. Um, but not playing with the heal definitely gives her a very fragile feeling, I would say. Uh, so that's why I've always normally run with the heal. But she didn't have much more AA than Brooklyn did. So now that she has more AA, maybe she'll be slightly better. And with that, I think that is everything in regards to the update. There are still quite a few ships that are said to be coming out, such as the three remaining American cruisers, uh, Oregon City, Albany, and Vallejo. So maybe we'll see something like that in the near future. But 
But right now we have our hands full with the new event and all the diamond ships and the new tech tree ships that have now been released. So it's going to be a, quite a busy week here coming up. Uh, add to that, we still have stats clash. So we're going to be going over the or attempting the mission for this event. Uh, so I'm going to be using my space Montana. It's just a normal Montana. It just has a space camo, but it does give me a 35% point gain bonus. So like I said, if you're really wanting the ship, go to the loot boxes, the iridescence, it'll give you 500 star coins, or if you do the gold, it'll give you 100 star coins. Probability for Saratoga is high in the gold ones, and Orion, or Space Montana, in the iridescent ones. So definitely look into those if you would want that. So let's take a look to see what this event has. Now, it's actually going up against my favorite event ship in well technically naval creed's event history uh it's the h45 or the german super battleship it's not the ufo it's not habakkuk it's not the weird like flying duchess or it's not the space station it's the old h45 which honestly is i think the first event that i ever participated in and it's still my favorite ship to go against i have a mini h45 Actually, I can't see it through the tech tree, so I'll have to do it this way. Um, so, yeah, rundown quickly on H-45 is it's a super German battleship that has 800 millimeter guns. Yes, you heard me correctly, 800 millimeter guns and a ton of secondaries. Uh, so this is a mini version of it. It's not actually looking like this. But the best way to destroy the ship is to get on its broadside. If you shoot under its turrets, specifically right here, you will get a ton of citadels. The ship is one of the easiest ones, the citadel, and you need to take advantage of that because its guns hurt when they hit you. You can't really bounce 800 millimeter shells. You can barely bounce 510 millimeter shells from Super Yamato. So 800 just completely ignores any kind of armor. Um, but that's not the only ships that you'll be going up against. Um, you also have a Shinomi, you have a Kremlin. Uh, let's see, what else do you have? Oh, you have an FDR too, or a Coral Sea. Uh, so you also have to keep aircraft in mind. So we're going to be using Orion. And let's toss ourselves into this first lightweight mission here. All right, so I was able to beat the solo the first time I did it, but we're going to join up with a aligning today's uh, whoever decided to join my team. Normally, you would only have you and three Washington bots or North Carolinas, but you can also switch out to have your teammates if you so desire that. Um, honestly, like I said, I was able to beat it solo, so it's not terribly difficult. And you're going up against an H-45, a uh, two... The Katarinas are in German Lind sister ships and three Lenins. Um, so the Kremlins and FDRs and all those are going to be like the final missions, I believe. But for right now, it's just three Lenins, a couple Katarinas, and the H 45. So I'm hoping that the lining will focus on the smaller battleships and I can focus on the H 45. Because I am better situated to attack that. I don't know actually how Lining does against H45. So we might be able to get a chance to see how that is. Uh, looks like Lining has already popped the radar. So we can kind of see that we have two ships over here. And a bunch of ships over here. And there's the H45. She does kind of sit very high in the water. I'm not quite sure why that is. But that's just how it is. She's a big and bulky battleship. So she'll run up ground onto islands quite frequently similar to how the ufo does uh, so definitely take advantage of that if she does that broadside and so here comes the first set of missiles let's see okay so they're aiming at uh, lemon the lemon's down and a couple hits on Rodina. Right, so let's see what we can do what is a good fighting at this angle i'm going to pretty much bounce so let's see if we can find a different target like this lemon. 
so let's see if we can take out... I do have the accuracy module equipped right now, because you kind of want to stay at range. You really don't want to get close to the H45, because similar to Habakkuk, she has really, really strong secondaries. And we started off with a triple citadel on Lenin, which is very good. Alright, H45 is turning broadside, so let's do her a favor and give her some 16 inch shots. We're going to angle away from the ship so we can get out of range in case we do get fired on. But yeah, 5 citadels, 90,000 damage already. You start off with only uh, H45 having 375,000 health. That does get higher very quickly. And so let's actually get the shield on the ground as expected. And let's just start sending shells here then. I'm going to angle myself a little bit more. Ignore the other battleships right now. Yep, there's a ton more damage. I don't know how my Ming is doing against stage 45. I don't even know if she's shooting or not. No, it looks like she's shooting the other battleships right now, which is fine with me. That's the role that my Ming is best at. Alright, so it looks like there's two missiles. Okay, so the missiles can damage H45. As we just saw. And however, I don't know how effective that would still be. I would still say using a battle should be good fast. So, as you can see, pretty easy once she's broadside. Um, if she's nose in or astern, then yeah, you're gonna have trouble with her. Okay. Send more shells. This should be the last salvo needed for H45. Now don't get me wrong, this video and this game itself makes her look really weak. However, that is definitely not the case. She just has weak armor. But once you go to the ultimate mission, which is what we will do tomorrow, I believe, or at least we're going to try to, uh, not only does she have 750,000 health, but there's also like 20 bots around her, and there's a Kagura universe, which we saw when we had the UFO, which has... The pinpoint accuracy dive bombers that just completely wipe out entire battleships. So we're going to have to see how we can pass that mission. Because I've already tried and I failed once. Um, but we'll do what we can. And in the meantime, we're going to see if we can finish off this Ekaterina here. There's honestly not too many ships left. Um, which works out in our favor. It's a relatively quick game. Even though it's a relatively long video. But there's just so much that came out. Alright, so this last Lenin is under attack by the missiles. Looks like this lining is using the first set of missiles, not the second ones. So it's launching four missiles, but they're pretty slow. I prefer the two missiles that are really fast. Alright, and there we go. Yep, we have a game. 463,000 damage in a game that's only four and a half minutes long. Two ships sunk, 63 shell hits, 28 citadels. Um, Team-wise, Aligning actually did really, really well. Uh, props to that player. Thank you for playing. I don't know if you'll ever see my video, but thanks. And yeah, they focused on the other battleships, which is the role of Lining. And I was able to work over the H-45 and finish her with a ton of citadels directly to the broadside. We did 343,000 damage out of 375,000 damage or health on H45. So that worked out for us extremely well. And with that, I will wrap up today's video. Uh, if you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And like I said, we have a ton of videos to do in the upcoming future with the new Japanese battleships, the Soviet battleships, and the gem ships. So I will sure. Be sure to show you all those in due time. So again, thank you and take care.